Greetings. Today I've come down to the basement of one of our offices to show you the ins and outs of an old telephone switch. This is a Siemens ISTX 300 and as the name suggests I believe it's capable of up to 300 lines although it may handle more now with the, the IP cards in it. The overall chassis is about I think this is about 17 years old, 16, 17 years old. So, as you can hear, it's running. The fans are a little bit uh, grouchy, but she runs well. We've got a, a bigger version of this up in one of our off other offices, an ISDX 3000, but they all run much the same. So, I'll take a quick look under the lid of this. what's inside. As you can see she's fairly packed out with lots and lots of cards. We've got the two shelves for the communications cards. These are for ex uh, extensions, uh, income lines on the trunks and also what's referred to as shelf zero over there which is where the processor card is. In the rear we have these two 50 volt power supplies and above that then we have the back planes where all the connections come in to go to those cards. all these connections then go along into one of these big panels. Here we go. All these connections on the left here come from the switch itself and they are then jumpered through to all these connections which go to all the extensions around the building and we've also got the incoming lines somewhere on here as well. Over there, I think. Of course, we want to see more than just the outside and a brief glimpse of the cards. Let's take a look at the cards themselves. And for that, I've come down to this office just down the corridor, where we've got another two. Now, one of these units is running the newer system software. It's not the newest; it's running Realtis 9, which comes on the with a new system card, there's a new card for I think version 8 and above and the other one uses, I think it's running on version 5.3 which uses the old cards. The difference, one's got a handful of cards, the other has a single one. Um, the old one I think takes about a quarter of an hour to boot up, the new one is ready to service calls in about 30 seconds from switching it on. So there's a big difference, you can turn these off without the entire office complaining about it to, if you reboot them. So, let's take a look see which one this is. I believe this is the, the newer of the two. It's not. This is the older of the two. Very interesting. Now, I'm not sure exactly what's going on here because these cards would normally go down there. But we'll, we'll run through the cards anyway and we'll see what we've got. To start with is this risk loader circuit board. Now this uses a pair of extra density floppy disks. You see the, the hole is in a slightly different location. On here it's higher up than it is on the HD. These are 4 meg unformatted disks. One will contain the program I think and the other one will contain all the, the running software. So we've got this board here. And what I'll do with each of these boards as I take them out, I'll take a nice clear photograph of each one which I can then bring up on screen. Like this. And 
and as you can see that was plugged in to this board. Oh, that's nice. Can't see any labelling on to say what it is. Ah, yes, it does. It says it's just down below, below the LEDs, RISC CPU. So that's the main process of mine. Which, like I said, I didn't expect to find that there. I'd expect that to find that down in, in shelf zero. Also the serial I.O. board here as well. And this will be for, I'd expect, hooking up for call loggers or the remote maintenance terminals and such like, which can, uh, which can use to control the system. These are quite easy to program, actually, these. Yeah, they do see quite a few cars in here that don't... not where I expect to find them. This one is Delta CH Cont. I assume it's a Delta channel controller. Nice big 68,000 processor. It's on the top left. And it's really showing its age here with this Dig SW control. So I assume that's a digital switch controller. There's a crystal here. There's a crystal and there's a trimmer there as well. Yeah, it's all discrete logic. This is all 74LS series buffers. And we haven't even reached any of the channel cards yet. This is a modem. This is a 300 baud modem, so you can dial into it. And uh, on these older switches, that modem was a real pain to communicate with. You'd connect in, and sometimes it would hook up. Sometimes you'd lose carrier and then you bring back again and the thing's engaged so you couldn't get into it again until, you, until it gave up and hung up. All good fun, made a big difference when the newer cards came out. Shelf interface, again we've got lots of sem 4 ls series logic chips on here. As I said this is quite an old switch, it's a perfectly functional switch but it is quite old. It's a 8 channel, 16 channel sorry general purpose I.O. board. This is run with a CG9022N chip. Oh, date code on here, 8935. 35th week of 1989. I should have checked, I should have been checking the date codes on these actually. This 8944, 8927. So that gives you an idea of the true age of this unit. It's about 24 years old. And we've got a large 8 megahertz crystal bottom end. This is a rotary register, this was tucked in right at the back there. We'll see how many boards of these are no longer used with the new system when I, when I check out the other one because a lot of these cards are going to be obsolete on the, on the new board. So this is a, a rotary register. Again, lots of SEM4 LS series stuff. Some chip by AMD as well, some AM934L, sorry, AM93L422s. Over here we have a universal trunk controller. Get it out. There we go. And the chips on these. Oh, we've got some surface mount stuff on this. This is a bit newer. There's much less. There's very little actually going through holes on this. And the date codes in here 9210, 9215. So this will be a trunk controller card, so that will connect to the ISDN lines. I'm sure some telecom engineers watching this will think, hey, what's he talking about? If I'm wrong, please feel free to correct me in the comments. And then beyond that, we've got these four channel interface cards. There's one, two, three, four, there's five of these on this slot, on this shelf. It says interface on these, there are extension cards down there, so these may actually be... I think these are actually the, tr the, the trunk cards themselves, and that other card was for controlling them. So it's another big beefy card.
card here, some interesting delay lines. These are, I think the delay lines here. Again, the chips are around about 1990, beginning of 1990 on this. And before we get onto the other shelf in here, let's see what's we've actually got in on shelf zero. Let's see what's what actually belongs in there. The first card is two mega word memory and control. These are all MCM 511 AP10s with an AM2964 BPC and an AM29C60 APC. About two of those. With a bit of glue logic as well. Next up, this is this is a CPU board. Is there a CPU one? That means there should be a CPU on here somewhere. There's a whole bunch of AM2901s, 2904s, there's a 2910 there. But for a CPU board, I don't see much sort of CPU ish compared to what's on some of the other boards. Oh. Next up, we have CPU 2. Some microchip technology stuff here. An AY3 10150. Oh, sorry, uh, AY3 1015D P, two of those. And a ULA and a few other bits and pieces. With a few control switches on here as well. And metal can shielded relay by Siemens. And crystal. Just with these. I don't know if they're not ferrites, but it seems it's quite an odd design, something I haven't seen before with the, uh, the mountings for these crystals. It may be just a mountain socket. And the last should be, oh there's another digital switch control card there. And next up we have shelf interface. 16 channel codec card. Quite smart and quite sparse. Chip codes on here are 9138 and 9125, so middle of 1991. Yes, yeah, a 16 channel codec card. Got these HF 12911As. Funny enough, 16 of them. For every one of these codec cards, it is also a 16 channel extension interface. So the two cards run together to do to get each of these will represent 16 extensions coming into the system. WLAs and various these hybrids sticking up out of the board. So these cards are repeated for every set of extensions you've got. 16 extensions, two cards, another 16 extensions, another two cards. So that's what we've got one there. Then we have another trunk controller and another four channel interface, same as the ones above. Then we have another board here, which is a comms equipment group is written on the yeah, com communications equipment. It's a phone switch, the whole thing is communications equipment. But that's the next board coming out. Looking at the edges of the boards down below in the rest, and I think we've already seen these ones. And I haven't seen this card yet. This is an eight channel bypass card. And what this does, if the system crashes or power to the whole system is lost, these relays will drop over and you'll have extensions around the building which will suddenly become analog telephone lines. It will just drop the switch out altogether and just sit those analog lines straight onto the extension. You pick it up. So those could be things like the lift phones, for example. So you know, places where if the system goes bang, you really don't want to be stuck in there with no comms. That's where you'd run these emergency power fail lines too. Those uh, emergency phones in corridors and things like that. We have red phones in one of our other buildings and they're all 
on these power fail lines. The system goes boom, they just drop over. Next card up is a GPIO card again, and then we have this card which we haven't seen yet, which is an ops console card. Now, the operator's console is a big souped up telephone, it's the one you'd see on reception. It could, uh, um, in some cases, you have it hooked up as a computerized terminal, so you've got the whole display and you can choose numbers on, on there, and it, you know, it's fully computerized, otherwise, you just get the big beefed up telephone extension. And this is the one. This is the card which is dedicated to controlling those consoles. I don't know how many consoles one of these will take. I think it'll take more than one. Aha! This is why those extra cards were in there. And I couldn't see any floppy drives and things at the bottom. This one uses... It's got these cards. It's got that down here. So there's going to be another card on the back of that and I haven't brought the screwdriver. So there's not much else to see down there. There'll be a, a control board for the floppy drives, which in this case are empty, there's no, cards, there's no discs in there. So that's what's in an ISDX 300. Or at least that's what's in the old ISDX 300s. We may as well take a look in the other one as well and see what the differences are. Now this is the other ISDX. It's looking a bit neater than the other one. Um, it hasn't had much pulled out of it. I think this is just that the other one has had a lot more crap just stuffed into the case. What you'll see here, amongst other things, is shelf zero isn't stuffed full of cards. It has just one card. All those processor cards have been replaced that one. Get the dip switches on it. It's there we go. Yep, yeah, this is the system card. There's no bunch of CPU cards now, it is just the system card. What you can't see from here actually is the back plane was changed as well. When they changed this card, they also changed the back plane behind. All the rest of the cards stay put, the system cards come out and this goes in instead. There's an opportunity there to show you the inside of the back plane. You can see some of these slots have got extra sections above, which I assume are where the trunk cards are. What have we got here? Four channel interface. Yeah, it's where all the interface cards are. The rest of these cards are much the same, we've still got the same codec cards, the interfaces, that one's different, I'll show you that one in a second. Up here then we've got the extension cards and the codec cards, same as, same as before, the shelf interface there. Here's the new environment for the for shelf zero, you can see there's two slots available. There's that one there which wasn't even occupied and this new high density slot here and then we've got more codec and extension interfaces there. There should be another ops console one up here. Yep, here's the ops console. Eight channel bypass. There's a new modem card we'll take a look at and there we go. Here is that 30 channel interface card. This is for an ISDN30 rather than an ISDN2. So you get 30 channels coming in on one 2 megabit line. This is the new modem card. It's a combined GPIO and modem card. Apparently Warning, contains hot devices. So we're gonna get hot on this. So you can see it's a lot simpler but more yet more integrated than, than the other one. It's got more stuff all shoehorned into it. The modem is a lot better on these than it is on the older ones. It'll handle higher speeds, but of course with these we can also telnet into these things as well. So we can, uh, we can connect in using the 
network connection and you can access them remotely that way, which is much, much better than having to dial in. And it's not much else to show in here. You can see the floppy drive bay is gone. There's no electronics in there. And this is a better view of the back. Now there is one more board tucked away, which we can't actually access because I haven't got the screwdriver. And that's the board which would have sat down behind where the, where the floppy drive used to be. And that now handles the Ethernet connection so you can remotely access the, the whole thing. But here you can see our connections where on the other one in next door all the, the cables are all plugged in so it's hard to see. This is a much easier way of seeing. And you can see it's got the that's the new backplane connections as well. The stuff down the bottom, all the power supply stuff, is exactly the same as before. So there you go, two ISDX 300 telephone switches. Now where would you see these? Generally you wouldn't, but they could be behind the scenes in large office buildings. Prisons apparently still use these big old DXs. Um, you'll also find it, you may well find them in um, small village telephone exchanges. These can be full blown, it's not just a phone switch. It can be a full-blown telephone exchange. If not one of these, if not one of these, it could be one of his bigger brothers. And we'll finish off with just a quick look at one of those. Now this is the bigger brother. This is the ISDX 3000. No lights on it, it's not grumbling, that's a good sign. Much the same as the other one, but more shelves. Uh, there are dual processors in this, and it fails over every night, so every year, each of the processors has 24 hours in charge before it flips over. So there's always, you always know that the standby is okay. These connections are the ones which come from the telephone switch, either to the yeah, these are all the extension ones and there's the, the incoming trunk lines as well and these then all connect to distribution points around the rest of the building so these connect to that big tangle of cable into there and that then goes into the switch the switch is powered then i'll find the right key By these rectifiers and there's more in there as well and we've also got these big backup batteries at the bottom so there's plenty of run time in this thing got some nice big fuses anyway that's the supply let's pop the hood on the DX itself Okay, and we're in. Much the same as before. You can actually hear some of the calls coming through on here. It's actually ringing extensions. The same cards as before, same card pairs, extension card and the codec card, all running through there. That is a new card. That is a combined extension and codec card. So this is only the single one in the slot there. There are a couple of cards which look quite different. That's another interface card of some sorts. There's some more interface cards down here. There's the trunk ones. And down here, we've got the new processor cards. You can see this has replaced an entire shelf. That whole thing came out when this was upgraded. It was a much bigger full size module for this which we do still have in storage somewhere and we have these two identical cards and another one in the middle which is I assume some sort of management card 
So here we go, we've got a watchdog like this. So I assume this one is watching these two processor cards and if there's an issue with one, it'll throw over to the other one. But apart from that, this one is much the same as its little brothers that we just saw. And in fact, this one's connected by a fiber optic link down to one of those. And this one then, you see, is just even more. Big old switch for a big old building, and it's working perfectly. Hope you like it. Thanks for watching. Catch you soon.